In this lecture, we're actually going to look at more or less a bit of theoretical background about the transition engineering project when it comes to that tricky path break concept. Because I think you have to really understand the dynamics of the human energy, economy, environment, social system in order to do good path break concept generation. The first thing we're going to look at is, is um, just the energy flow idea. The idea that energy comes into the system, it flows through the system, and it goes out of the system. That's the classic way of looking at our energy systems. Think of it as the Newtonian approach. <laughs> well, it turns out we're going to need a relativistic approach. So the first slide here is just that basic idea of energy flow. And the arrows that you see are the flow of energy. And the boxes are the conversion of energy. And that's how we model the, the flow of energy and resources through an energy system. And that's fine. It helps us understand the efficiencies of different parts of that system. Um, and that sort of a system is what's called an open flow system. It only works as long as the flow coming in equals the flow going out, which worked pretty well for last century, but it's not going to work very well in the next century. That's the idea of adaptation. Now, the system actually is a bit complex. And slide two is an example of that complexity. It's an example of the transport system. The transport system clearly uses energy. It uses a lot of energy. But the way that it uses energy actually comes from many layers, right down to the fact of how your, your geography is. Where's the river? Where are the mines? Where are the farms? Where's the port? Where are the mountains? The very basic idea or the, the basic reality of your geography determines how energy can and can't be used. So you have to understand that first. Then how do humans place themselves within that geography? That's what we call land use. And decisions that are made about land use then determine the distances between things which then determine the energy you use. And the types of transport systems that are laid into that land use is called your form, your, your, your transport networks within the, the transport and urban form. And those networks, think about it, they can be electric light rail or they could be freeways. They could be um, coastal shipping or they could be highways. So the type of transport system that's built into that form will have a lot to do with how much energy is used. And then finally, one of the last layers is what we call behavior. What choices do the people make? And I hope you can see by looking at that complex system in the different layers that the choices, the behaviors that people make are actually quite limited by the decisions other people have made, mostly engineers, about the form, the land use form, and the transport um, system that's been put into that. So the idea that we might expect people to change their behavior, for example, to walk more or to ride their bike, doesn't make any sense if all we've given them is freeways and huge distances to traverse to get to anything. That's important because if we're gonna have adaptive capacity, if we're gonna be able to change our whole system to use less energy, we're going to have to look at the entire system, at all the different layers, and at all the complexity. The next slide, slide three in this lecture, shows what mechanical engineers, electrical engineers um, should be familiar with, and that's a feedback control system. Feedback controls, the arrows in this diagram, are not flows of anything. They're not flows of energy. They are signals. And we all know that to get a dynamic system to operate properly, you need a stable feedback control system. That's not a mystery to us. It's a mystery to most of the rest of the world, but it's not a mystery to engineers. We understand state space analysis and feedback control theory. Um, what's interesting is if you take a feedback control theory approach to the anthropogenic system. Anthropogenic means the human behavior system. Now this is going to be an important part of the theory of how transition engineering projects are going to be developed. The next slide 
the final slide here. It's a little bit complex. We're going to have to have a good look at it. It actually represents feedback control theory applied to anthropogenic system dynamics. What you'll see is that the, the um, input, the reference input into the system isn't a flow of energy. It is the desire or the anticipation or the understanding that people have that they will survive another day. And that survival depends on safety, security, and sustainability. All humans anticipate surviving another day. We wake up anticipating there will be a tomorrow. <laughs> now, we do that in the context of the time and place and culture and technology that we have around us on that day. If you think about it, you could look at any given time in history, any given culture, any place on the planet, and you'll see that the understanding of how you're going to live another day is quite different depending on where you are, depending on whether you live in a city or a rural area. So that's what the, the, the forward element there is. It's, it's um, the conditioning of that drive for survival to fit the time and place and the technology system that you're actually in. Now the feedback control, as we know, comes around, the feedback comes back and the feedback tells you how, whether you are operating that way or not, whether you're going to survive or not. And it induces change depending on how close to your reference input your performance is. Now in our society, we have some pretty serious survival issues. But the feedback information about that is not very good and it's not affecting choices that people make. We actually have no question whatsoever that putting the fossil carbon from 150 million years ago into the biosphere now, into the atmosphere, is changing things in a way that is not good for us, not good for our civilization at all. And yet that information is not affecting change. And from this diagram, it's pretty clear why. Because that's a secondary feedback. A primary feedback is the next level of feedback that affects choices. And those choices are mostly based on what worked yesterday. So I wake up with the belief that I'm gonna survive another day. And I know darn well that the way to do that is to do what I did yesterday. I do what works. And I do that within the context of what I can afford. The other people in my civilization are how I survive another day. We depend on each other for all sorts of complex interactions, which we call the economy. Now here's where engineering, if you look at anthropogenic system dynamics from a feedback control perspective, you do not see the world the, the way the economists do. You see that the economy is simply an actuator in that system. It's what links you up with the built environment, with the resources that you're going to use, with the technology that you're going to use, and with the services you're going to get. It's just a linking actuator. It's not the driver for the world. It's not what we wake up in the morning wanting to do is to spend money. Yeah, it, it's, it's kind of funny that you get this, this different view of the world if you have to try and model the way that this system behaves according to feedback control theory. But what it tells us, this theory, what's really important about it is that behavior isn't going to change as long as the system that people are using works. Now, whose job is it to make those systems work? Pray tell. It's not the citizens themselves. They use, for example, their transportation system the way it's been designed to be used. They get in a car that they can afford and put petrol in it that they can afford and drive it down freeways that are already paid for at high rates of speed. That is how that system was designed. It is irrational to think that people are gonna suddenly start biking on that freeway. That's not what it was designed for. It's not behavior that changes the world, it's engineering. Those systems that have already been built now have to be changed and adapted so that the rational behavior using those systems reduces the threat and the risk that we now face. 
I hope you understand that. This is a theoretical idea. It's a theoretical approach to the way our system works. But the main point out of all of it is that yes, while people's decisions and behavior are affected by regulation, they are driven by the desire to survive another day by doing what we did yesterday, people's behavior is all done within the context of the engineered systems. Therefore, the only way to change the performance of a system so that we reduce, eliminate, and adapt to the risks that we have is for the engineers to change those systems.